Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. Once again, we are talking about barefoot shoes. And today I wanted to share my experience and some thoughts about Vivo Barefoot. Now I've done two videos about A Leader, which is a budget Amazon brand of barefoot shoes that I wear backpacking shortly after trying out those budget shoes and deciding that barefoot shoes are for me. I decided to go ahead and give Vivo Barefoot a try. So I still love the budget brand. I still love my A-liter shoes, but there's some things about Vivo Barefoot that make them a major upgrade in my opinion and definitely worth the price tag. So I will still wear my A-liter shoes from time to time, but Vivo Barefoot is more of my primary footwear with backpacking lately. And we'll get into all of the details as far as, you know, the durability, the features, even some similarities. But before we do get into all of this, two things I want to mention. Number one, we're not gonna go into every last detail, all the specs and features, just for the interest of time. If you do want all that info, all of those details, please go check out the blog post that will be linked in the description. This is just kind of the overview here in the video. The other thing is barefoot shoes are not for everybody. They are not a one size fits all. Everybody is different. So some folks need a lot of support. Some folks like me need practically no support. Just know that it may not be for you. These are the Vivo Barefoot Primus Trail FG2 women's shoes. And I will put that mouthful up on the screen, but I want to just make a note that these are the ones that have a tongue and more uh, cushion around the ankle and the heel. They have a very similar looking pair of shoes that does not have that. It's more of a slip on shoe and does not have nearly as much cushion. And I tried those and ended up having horrible blisters just walking up and down the stairs and around the house. It fit a lot like cardboard. Like if you could imagine putting your foot into a cardboard shoe, like it was just very stiff and sharp and uncomfortable. But these ones uh, are not like that at all. They have a tongue and some light cushioning around, like I said, the heel and the ankle, very similar to your basic tennis shoe. Now, my number one concern with picking out shoes I'd be backpacking in was do they have good grip or tread on the soles? Like what's the texture like? Because the A-liter shoes I was previously wearing, they had some good texture on the soles, but it would wear down with use. And I really wanted to make sure that the next pair of shoes, especially if I'm trying a more expensive brand, have good durable grip on that sole. So you can see there's two types of texture on this sole. There's these big chunky grips and then this uh, finer kind of texture on the inside of the foot. And I haven't had any slipping that was a bit of a concern with the budget shoes I was wearing and slipping became a more common occurrence. I haven't had that at all with these. That's been a major upgrade. They handle different types of terrain really well from, you know, rocks and even wet slick surfaces when it's raining. So that checked a major box for me, having really good grip so that I wouldn't be sliding, slipping on the various terrain I'd be backpacking over. An additional feature I really like about these shoes is the laces are not your traditional laces. My previous pair of shoes, the budget brand had this as well, where it's a cord and then this little locking mechanism. And what's fantastic about this is I don't have to worry about tying, untying, retying my shoes while I'm walking. I can easily, like without barely having to stop, give more or less slack uh, to the laces however I need. And I don't know about you, but it, it is kind of difficult to find that just right loose or tightness with traditional laces. And 
this is not an issue at all with the Vivo Barefoot shoes. Kind of number three on the list is the mesh material that the top part of the shoe is made of. It offers great ventilation and it dries pretty quickly. Now, if you're walking through rivers and creeks and streams all day, every day of your trip, obviously you can't expect miracles and expect the shoes to be bone dry each morning ready to go, but it holds up pretty well against the occasional puddle and mud and one or two creek crossings. And by the next morning, my shoes are pretty much dry. Unless there's particularly wet circumstances on the trail, be it rain or a lot of water crossings, it's really not a problem. And as I get moving, as I walk, as long as I'm not reintroducing them to more water, they do dry out fairly quickly as the day goes on. You're probably wondering about sizing. So I wear a seven and a half in these shoes and I really can't tell you what my shoe size is in other shoes. I know that may sound silly, but sometimes it's an eight. Heck, sometimes it's a seven, sometimes seven and a half. There are even some shoes, depending on the style where it's eight and a half. The cool thing about Vivo Barefoot is they have a sizing tool. Using your phone camera, you can get matched or fitted with a suggested size in their brand. And there's a whole process. They walk you through how to set up uh, taking the photo correctly so it can best measure your foot dimensions and all of that. And they recommended seven and a half. And when I got the shoes and tried them on, it was a perfect fit. That's not to say that will be everyone's experience, but it's a pretty nifty feature on their website to help you get matched with the right size. I mentioned one of the most important things with shoes I was gonna be backpacking in was the grip, the texture. Well, another high ranking item on the list was durability. Now I still love the A-Leader shoes. They are a fantastic budget option, but they just don't have the same durability. And after hiking the same type of terrain over a similar time period of a year and a half, almost two years, Vivo Barefoot was kind of the reigning champion in terms of durability. I was finding myself replacing the budget shoes every six months. These ones just now wearing out on me. And I have done a couple of repairs to them. I did have to sew up some holes that formed in the mesh. And uh, there were some holes starting in side of the shoe where like little pockets of dirt were building up because of holes that were formed in that fabric inside. And so I stuck some tenacious tape in there <laughs> um, and it's holding pretty good. But that is after almost three times the time period. On my A-Leader shoes, a recurring problem was the mesh and the sole separating from each other. So this whole area just like splitting apart and separating. And there's some very minor wear and tear on these Vivo Barefoot shoes, but by no means is the sole pulling away from the top portion of the shoe. Uh, that has not been an issue whatsoever. And that was a major reason for having to buy a new pair of A-Leader shoes. So we've talked about everything from the durability compared to a budget brand, that grip or texture, how it handles on different terrain and how breathable and fast drying the shoes are, the sizing. There's one thing that I really don't think is fair to call a criticism, but one thing that has made it so I'm retiring these from, you know, bigger backpacking trips a little bit early. And that is uh, the odor resistance. These shoes used to do great. I would wash them with a gentle soap, uh, even like the free and clear dish soap, and it would be fine. They would smell fresh and clean, ready to go for my next couple adventures. And more recently, like the last few months, they, they stink. 
they stink really bad. Like I made the mistake of leaving these in my car after a trip, like I had changed after the trip and thrown these in the back of the car and forgotten to take these out with the rest of my gear. And when I got back in the car to go to the store, it smelled so bad, like just sweaty hiker foot stink. And after washing them, they still stunk. Like it did not go away. And I have been controlling myself really well throughout this entire presentation because they still stink. And I washed them for this video and I've done everything, guys. Nothing is gonna remove the stink at this point. It has leached into the shoe. It has become a part of the shoe. And so for that reason, uh, and also the holes and patchwork on the inside, I have gone ahead and purchased a replacement pair just because uh, leaving these under the vestibule at night in the tent, it's unpleasant. It's just really unpleasant. I have mentioned these are a higher end shoe, so they come with a higher price tag and ballpark about 160. That's a lot compared to the budget shoes that typically range 35 to 40 dollars but I have gotten both my replacement pair and my first pair for 120 waiting for Vivo Barefoot to have a sale on their website and they discount it $40 which is really good because I also did not have to pay for shipping because of just the price of the shoes shipping was covered it qualified for free shipping those of you who have seen the handful of other review videos I've done you know that I am very much budget minded and I wait for sales. I do not shell out like hundreds and hundreds of dollars on stuff. I am very frugal uh, when it comes to my gear. Spending over a hundred dollars on barefoot shoes, like that's a huge chunk of change uh, in my opinion, but they have proven to be so worthwhile. Just in every way that they perform on the trail, I've been very impressed and have not regretted spending the amount of money I did on these shoes. So that's all I have for you today. Once again, please check out the blog post, link in the description, which gives you even more information about these shoes, less anecdotal, more informational. Nothing here is sponsored. It is just my own opinion and sharing my personal experience backpacking in this brand of shoe for close to two years now. So hopefully something I shared was helpful. Hopefully something shared in that blog post is helpful. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind Back to a place where I could begin That's not an option.